Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> we worship you. We worship you. God, we just worship you. Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. God bless you all. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hey. Oh my gosh. Happy Wednesday. We are just here. We're just worshiping God. <laughs> We're just lifting up the name of the Most High God. I don't know about you, but we are just in an atmosphere of worship unto God. And we are inviting you to join us as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How many of you out there know that God is the lover of our souls? And so when we understand that we have done such a deep intimate love relationship with our heavenly father worship just comes out of us and so we are so happy to be a part of your space to be a part of your time today we are going places with jesus ministries and guess what we are here i am here evangelist sedoni is here i am here pastor cindy one of the pastors of going places with jesus ministries and we have the one and only evangelist Sidoni who is with us tonight and so we are just we're just lover of God's we are just loving God's presence guys and so we welcome you to our Amen. midweek bible empowerment session where we just spend one hour in prayer or we spend one hour in unraveling and unpacking the word of God that what he's saying to you and I in this season. And so we are asking you to just come along with us for this next hour yeah. as we spend yeah. intimate time in worship, in prayer, and just getting into the word together about what, what God has to say about the power of prayer. I am going to go to my phone and I want to see who is on. So give me a second. Let me get everything up and running because we are multitasking here, guys. So, <laughs> so we want to see who is on with us, Evangelist Sedoni. Oh, gosh. God is so good. God is so good. We see a number of you on. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. you welcome. Let me turn my volume down. See, we getting it together. <laughs> Thank you guys for your love, for your patience with us. And again, I am Pastor Cindy. We have the one and only Evangelist Sedoni with us tonight. And we are here just to talk about the love of Jesus and the power of prayer, especially especially in these distracting seasons that we are in we are going back to what matters most to god and that is intimate communication with him and we're going to talk about prayer we're going to get into study of prayer this entire month our bible studies are focused on the power of prayer so i want you to invite somebody would you go ahead and invite someone would you go ahead and share this with someone tag somebody name in the comments i need you to host a watch party i need you to put your hands up and let somebody know that you are in the comments and you are shining tonight in the comments i want to see some names moving in the comments come on put your worship hands up put your hearts up put your likes up but don't forget to invite someone to be part of what we are doing tonight it is going to blow your mind your spiritual mind that is we don't want anybody blow their mind physically okay <laughs> we're gonna blow your spiritual mind of the truth that is god is gonna speak to us so i'm gonna shout you out tonight i'm gonna shout out a few people evangelists let's shout out a few people let's let's make somebody popular in these facebook streets tonight how about that <laughs> 
It's good to laugh. It's good to have fun, guys. Yay! Sister Judy, I see you. Hi, Sister Judy. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh my God, who else we have? Evangelist, you on here too. How you how you doing that, girl? <laughs> listen, listen, we gotta be in it to win it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Evangelist blowing up the stream while she's hosting the stream. Mm -hmm. God bless you all. Um, who else we got here? We got um Georgiana. Yeah, Georgiane. Okay, Georgiane is watching. Um, we got Deandra is watching. I see Pastor Roger. Hey, Pastor Roger, that's our senior pastor, and he's my boo. Okay, so thank you for being a part of tonight. Uh, who else we got here? Maricel is on here as well. And we have a couple other people. If you are on, just put a heart, put a like, something in the comments so we can shout you out, okay? Be sure to do that. Uh, come on, guys. Be sure, be sure, be sure to do that. We want to make sure that we recognize you. We want to make sure that we recognize you tonight. Love you guys. Yes, go ahead and tag, go ahead and share, go ahead and be a part of what God is doing in this service tonight. Amen. Make sure you share this live stream. So again, we are going places with Jesus and we're so happy that you are with us tonight. Amen. We have a few announcements before we get into the meat of the matter, as they say. And I just want to bring it to your attention that this Friday, this Friday, we have a youth meeting with our youth army. It's going to be awesome. It's from 6 to 7 p.m. It's on Zoom. It's a private Zoom link. Head to our website, goingplacesWithJesusMinistries.com to get more information. And then this Sunday, it is going to be epic. This Sunday is Jesus to the Culture. And you're like, what is Jesus to the Culture, Pastor Cindy? Jesus to the Culture is where we go into the communities and we share the love of Jesus Christ to a hurting people. And so we literally have church in the park every third Sunday of the month within a city, within our county. And what do we do there? We worship God with the residents of that community. We give out free food and we also just share the love of Christ to people. This coming Sunday, we have something that's gonna be so great. We have free food boxes. We have the gospel, which is free. We're gonna do communion in the park, evangelist nature. And in nature, we are breaking bread and remembering in Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? We're going to have goodies for the kids. Uh, the youth ministry is going to be lit this Sunday. And it's also going to, we're going to have some hygiene products, dental hygiene products that will be given out. And so it's this Sunday at uh, 11 a.m. and we're at Sunrise City Public Park, 600 Sunset Strip, Florida, 333 one nine and if you are in the area please come on and join us it's from 11 a.m to 2 p.m and we're inviting everybody to be a part of it we want to shout out our corporate sponsors for this event this sunday we want to shout out feed in south florida for blessing us to be a blessing with free fruit to our community members and we also want to shout out liberty dental that gave us so much dental hygiene products to give out to the community so everybody's going to have beautiful smiles and a fully um, uh, belly with a lot of food in it worshiping God right so it's going to be so great guys and we want to also say thank you and advice to all the in advance from to all the volunteers to the pastors to the to the uh, leaders of the church to everybody that's going to come and and serve and just fellowship with us on this Sunday we are looking forward to see your beautiful faces Pastor Roger and I miss you face to face and so we love when we do Jesus in the culture we get to interact and love on everybody. So we look forward to that this coming Sunday. Uh, we also want to remind you that um, we are here every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Bible empowerment. We also have discipleship, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, where we break down the basics of biblical principles uh, for our new disciples. So I have said a lot, Evangelist. I want to also put a pin on something that's coming up, Evangelist, mm -hmm. on the 
28th, the 28th of April, guys, right here on the 28th of April from 7 p.m., we have a special guest speaker on our Bible study that night, and it's Reverend Cynthia Cadogan from Trinidad and Tobago, Straight Gate Pentecostal Sanctuary. Uh, yes, and she's going to be our guest speaker, and she's going to be talking about the importance of prayer in the last days. How many of us know that we need that word, the importance of prayer? Reverend Cynthia Cadogan happens to be my first, first pastor, and she's also my aunt. And so it's such a privilege that we can do ministry together in this season. That's an awesome legacy. And I give God praise for that. So on the 28th, you're going to see all of the ads, all of the promotion on Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. You're gonna, we're going to blow it up. And so you're going to, you're going to have all the information on that. So without further ado, I am going to pray and we're going to get into what we've, God is leading us to share with you tonight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's pray, guys. Let's just lift up the name of Jesus and worship God tonight. I see Sister Shana is on. Sister Shana, God bless you. And everybody who's on tonight, I'm just inviting you to join me right now. Mm -hmm. Please be sure to share. Please be sure to share. Mm -hmm. We need you to share what God is doing tonight. Amen. And so we're going to open up in prayer. Ah, oh, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God, I'm worshiping you in all of the beauty of your holiness tonight, God. You are so awesome. You are so wonderful. Lord God, I thank you for who you are. You are a marvelous God. And we just want to say thank you. How many of you tonight are just thanking God for bringing you to Wednesday? <laughs> Some of us started Monday and we weren't sure what Wednesday was going to look like. But we want to thank God right now for Wednesday. Thank God for this moment in time that you are breathing. You are literally inhaling and exhaling. And so I just want to say thank you, God, that we have air to inhale and exhale. We have the functionality of our limbs to worship you, God. And so we just want to be just still in this moment with a heart of gratitude and think about one thing that you are grateful. One thing, it could be something big, it could be something small, regardless of it, it is what's going to drive your worship. It's what's going to propel you into that holy place tonight. And so I am thinking about just being in this forum tonight with you. I'm telling you, when I think back about where I, when my life started and, and I just give God praise that he allowed my footsteps to land here tonight. Hallelujah. Because none of us are worthy. None of us are worthy to stand in the presence of God, but because of his grace and his mercy, we have the privilege to be in his presence. So I just want you in the comments, just say, thank you, Jesus. Tell God what you're thankful for. Let's get interactive. Tell God what you're thankful for tonight. Yes, I see some of you are just giving God praise and giving God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. We are live and we want you to be interactive with us. Think about it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be something that you, you got a new car or I got a new house. We don't wait for that. We're not moved by that when we give God thanks. Those are wonderful. And yes, we celebrate in those moments, but we want to give thanks God for God that he saved us, that he kept us, that he has kept us in our right minds. How many of us know the value of mental health? Hallelujah. In this world of distraction. And so we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Could somebody put in the comments, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for my for my family. Thank you, God, for my children. Thank you, God, for my church family. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing me into a place of newness in my growth and my relationship with you. We say thank you. We say thank you. God, and we thank you for all that you're going to do tonight because you are so worthy so worthy to be praised. We lift you up and we honor you. Bless every hearer. Now, what I want you to do is make sure you have something to take notes. 
you want to be sure to be a good student tonight and a good student i tell my students all the time in the classroom make sure you take notes because you can't rely on our, our memory sometimes evangelists it doesn't always work for us right especially when we're juggling so many ideas in this creative season that we're in right amen i declare that over somebody that you're in a creative season yes you are in a creative season you are going to take novel things and make them so so uh, awakening to be used it, it just things that may seem so mundane uh i'm i'm going on the left evangelist i'm so give me a second i declare that there's a creative stirring in somebody tonight in the name of jesus that you are going to take what seemed to be mundane or useless to somebody and you're going to make it a novel idea that is going to impact the kingdom and the people of god mightily in the name of jesus i don't know who that's for maybe it's for me but i receive it in the name of jesus god bless you right now i have the great privilege to welcome uh, our speaker for tonight. Oh my God, I am beaming with excitement. I am so elated to have the opportunity to introduce our speaker, Evangelist Sedoni. She's going to speak to us and she's going to break it down for us on this topic of prayer. For why is it important for you and I to grasp a greater understanding of prayer? And she's going to give it to us tonight. So be sure to when she hits you with a mm word, hallelujah, that you put it in the comments. You put a mm, you put a, a love, you put an emoji, emoji, you put something and said, I receive that word in the name of Jesus. Would you help me make welcome Evangelist Sedoni? Come on, people of God. Hallelujah. Evangelist, all you. Oh, my God. Amen. 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 Ah, I just really want to thank God for this opportunity. And of course, uh, my pastors, Pastor Cindy, uh, Pastor Roger, uh, of course, Pastor DeAndra. God bless y'all so very much. Uh, this, this is just an amazing and humbling opportunity. Let me just add that. It's very, very humbling um, to see that God can use you in a season like this, whatever we're called to do, especially in this season, we have to be mindful that we ought to be humbled by it because to be used by God is an extreme privilege, not given to many, not afforded to many, okay? So, you know, Pastor uh, Pastor Cindy uh, asked and she said, Evangelist Sidoni, you know what? We wanna invite you to speak on this topic. All the month of April, we're looking into prayer we started our first week off last wednesday with a dynamic solid hour of praying for the people live it was powerful we are still receiving the testimonies and it just really blessed the hearts of god's people so she said we're going to continue this whole month with prayer i'm like okay well amen yes we about to do it and then she said we want you to speak on prayer and more importantly why is prayer important in the lives of all believers? And I said, oh, wow, in a season like this? Okay, let me at it. And it took, it took, of course, prayer <laughs> to really get to this point, amen? But the Lord really has given, has afforded me the opportunity to come here and to share this with you. Now, there are many biblical reasons. Before we get into it, I want to remind everyone, just like Pastor Cindy said, get your pen and your paper ready, okay? Because there's going to be a lot of Bible verses. Because as a, I remember when I was a new believer, just a quick background story. I remember when I was a new believer, one of the things that I was taught and it was drilled into me is the power of God's words. God's words ought to navigate us, meaning guide us to where we ought to go. So it was a part of my, of my learning experience to use the God, the word of God for every single thing. If I can't find it in the word, guess what? You can't tell me that God said it. I'm sorry. I love you, but I'm about to leave you. Okay. <laughs> now there are many biblical reasons as to why every believer should pray. Before we get into the why, we first need to have a clear understanding of the what. What is prayer? What is this phenomenon you know, that every religion in the world speaks of and it encourages their followers to do it? What is it about prayer? 
Now, as believers in Christ, we are reminded in Psalms 119, verse 105, that God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, meaning it ought to guide us. What does a lamp do? A lamp provides light so we can see in the darkness, okay? It's a light onto our path so we can see clearly where we ought to go. Now, as we probe this question, we will use God's word to navigate these territories so we can be sure that we're on the path to righteousness. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, believers from the first church were encouraged by the apostle Paul to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, meaning pray and do not stop praying. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, for me, for all of us, okay? This sentiment has been echoed through centuries of teachings and it stands true today. It is irrefutable evidence that is a part that it is a part of God's divine will for mankind to build and maintain a relationship with him through prayer, okay? So now you have the what is prayer. What is prayer, okay? Prayer for the Christian believer, and I'm going to be very intentional and very deliberate about the fact that we are speaking to the Christian believer, okay? It is very important that we understand who we are in Christ because our identity is not based on what the world says it should be. It is based on who we are in Christ Jesus. So I'm speaking to the Christian believer here. Prayer is a divine line of communication between God and his people that flows both ways, okay? Now, due to my background in media and communication, some of you know this, some of you don't, I'm inclined to share with you the main elements of what they call in speech and vo well, voice and speech, they call it uh, the effective communication process. For any line of communication to be effective, there must be three very simple things present. Okay, get ready to write them down. First, you must have an active and effective speaker. Mm. Second, you must have an active and effective listener. Third, you must have an active and effective message. So you need a speaker, a listener, and a message. Okay. Now, note I stress the word effective because as believers, we are called to have effectual and fervent prayer and that they will avail much according to James 5, 16. The believer who will experience much growth and spiritual power, to be honest, is the one who understands the power of effective prayers. Answered prayers will be the reward to those who understand the power of effective mm. praying. Wow. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to repeat that. And I want somebody to just put it in the comments because there will be people watching this afterward. After we've had this broadcast, there will be repeat broadcasts of this session. And we want everybody to get it. Answered prayers will be the reward to those who understand the power of effective praying. It's not about how long you pray. It's not about how much vain repetition. If you read the book of Matthew, when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, he said, when you do this, don't be like those in the streets with their vain repetition, thinking, mm. and I'm paraphrasing here, thinking that they will be heard for their many words. That's not effective praying, okay? And if you stick with us throughout this entire series for the whole month of April, you will be taught how to do effective praying, okay? Mm. Now, why should believers in Jesus Christ pray? You're a new convert. You just came in on the streets. Uh, you know, you fresh out the sea. You got a lot of issues. You got a lot of problems. You trying to get it together. You think in your mind that you can put it together and pull yourself together without Christ Jesus. I got newsflash for you. No, you can't. The devil is a liar. Okay. When a believer comes into the kingdom of God, they have come from a place of darkness into a place of light. The presence of God is likened unto marvelous light. It's so bright, you can't even open your eyes in the presence of God, really and truly, okay? Now, 1 Peter 2, verse 9 states, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, 
a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So it, make no mistakes about it. Don't get all self-righteous. Don't start thinking, yeah, you got it together. Jesus called you. No, you've been called from darkness into a place of light. Now, it is with this in mind that we have laid out three very simple reasons why the supporting with rather with the supporting Bible proof, why the believer in Jesus Christ need to pray. Now, remember, we're stressing the believer in Jesus Christ. OK, uh, we are not on here giving tips to nobody else in their religion. Amen. We worship the true and living God, the one true and living God. OK, so this these are tips for the believers in Jesus Christ. The first one, and there are many reasons. But for simplicity's sake, we're sticking with only three tonight, just because it's more palatable and you can digest it better, okay? The first one, prayer is a part of God's will for our lives, meaning this is God's desire for us. He wants us to be in this place with him all day, all night. When you look at the book of Philippians, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, says we ought to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So there's, there, what did he say? Make your requests. He, he didn't say, oh, only if you want this, you need to pray for me. Only if you want that. No, make your requests, whatever they are, however, however extreme you think your need is. God is a provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. Okay. So he provides and it is a part of his will that we speak with him in prayer. Okay. As prayer begins to become a natural part of our lives, we will begin to comprehend what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. According to Romans 12 verse two. You see, prayer opens us up to the mysteries of life that God wants to reveal to us so we can walk uprightly before him. Mm -hmm. Colossians 4 and 2 says we should continue earnestly in prayer. Continue earnestly in prayer, meaning prayer is not just a one and done deal. It says continue as we continue to grow in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. You see, as you think deeper on prayer, I want everybody to think along the lines of the definition we gave you, that it is a divine line of communication between us and God, and it flows both ways, okay? I want everybody to ask yourself this question, and I, I want you to write this question down. At the end of the session, sit back, go over it, allow it to really sink in your hearts and say to yourself, boy, wow, wow, God, is this where I am? Is this really where I am? Here's the question. Why should God trust you <laughs> to share deep secrets with you when you've never taken the time to know him? Wow. Why would you put yourself, put yourself in, let the shoe be on the other foot. Why would you take up all of your secrets and share them with a complete stranger? You wouldn't. You would not. So why do we expect God to do this? Why do we expect to not build a relationship, not take the time to build a relationship with God, but we should just sit and be receiving revelations? We're going to receive some revelations, all right, but they will not be holy revelations. I promise you that. They will not be rooted in the word of God. I promise you that. OK, you see, as with any relationship, trust is built through effective communication. That's why when when when, you know, when partners, lifelong partners meet before they become husbands and wives, they sit and they talk and they talk for hours on the phone and you call your friend up and you be like, oh, my gosh, he called me or she called me. And you get to know the person. And that is how you build trust. OK. Mm -hmm. Trust is built through communication mm -hmm. and it thrives on each party sharing some truth about who they are and what they want. The who, 
they are right there can be the active speaker or the active listener and the what they want can be the active and effective message okay you never go to a table with nothing in your hands come on now okay amen amen yeah. so we're yeah. gonna go now to the second reason every single believer needs to pray and especially the new believer in this time i want to really encourage you not to get caught up in the distractions there's so many things i i'm 40 years old yes i just gave my age away on live tv amen hallelujah praise the lamb i'm walking in it <laughs> amen and i've never seen a more distracting time than now i'm being honest i've lived through some stuff but this is a different level so now more than ever this next reason the second reason the believer in jesus christ needs to pray is that prayer draws us closer to god amen, mm -hmm. amen. when we're drawn closer to god we start to change when we change in god's presence we are spiritually refreshed and ready for the things that lie ahead how can we know what lies ahead right if we don't spend time in the presence of god when we spend time in his presence, he makes secrets known unto us. James 4 and 8 says, draw near to God and he will what? Draw near to you. Amen. Amen. Psalms 145 verse 18 says, the Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Okay. You see, the simple truth of the matter is this, everyone. Whether or not you want to believe it, whether or not you want to accept it, the truth is the truth. And there is no truth outside of God's truth. God created mankind for his glory. Okay. We weren't created to be no successful business owner and that alone. We were not created to be no, you know, social media influencer. We were created for God's glory and God's glory alone. Okay. We were created to be in full koinonia. Now, koinonia is a Greek word that means intimate fellowship. Okay. So we were created to be in intimate fellowship with the divine God. But this fellowship was broken due to man's disobedience. We know the story, Adam and Eve, la da dee la da da Garden of Eden, all of that, went to Sham, boom, we're here. Okay. Now, through Jesus Christ, here is the hope. Through Jesus Christ, God has reconciled. And I found, Pastor Cindy, I found a very interesting definition of the word reconciliation. And I love it for this purpose. It means called back into harmony. We were reconciled or called back into harmony, into a relationship with God. Colossians 1, 19 through 20 reads, for it pleased the father that in him all fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile, call back into harmony, all things to himself. By him were the things on earth, things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. So through Jesus Christ, mankind, God has reconciled, God has called mankind back into harmony with himself. Okay. So when you think about prayer, think about prayer along these lines. It draws us closer to God because it is the will of God. Hallelujah. Okay. Now this harmonious relationship gets deeper with time spent in God's presence. Deep calls on to deep, and we are called to come up higher. God said, listen, come up hither. Come up higher. You want to you wanna know me? Come up higher. You want to know me? Spend time with me. Come up higher. You see, Pastor Cindy, I am I'm always floored by this very simple revelation. The deeper we go into God is the higher we get. I don't know. You're, 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 when you're, when you're going deeper, deeper in the human mind implies going down. But when you go deeper in God, you get higher. And I'm like, God, how do you even do this? God has so much depth. He takes us to new heights after every single encounter in his presence. 
Hmm. Now, prayer is the vehicle by which the believer in Christ is transported into God's marvelous light. And it is here that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, according to Romans 12, verse 2. Now, this renewed mindset for the believer is what allows us to accept and believe the salvation given to us through Jesus Christ. And it is what allows us to start believing what God has said about who he has created us to be. Okay. Can I just share something here? You see, the greatest crisis we are facing right now as a people, as mankind across the entire globe, Pastor Cindy, is an identity crisis. And I'm not talking about an identity crisis uh, in your sexuality, you know, whether or not you're gender fluid. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about the fact that people do not know who they are in Christ Jesus. You see, when you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus, you run around scuffling, you're shuffling. Okay, uh, IG says I should look like this. Facebook say I should weigh, mm. I should weigh this much. Um, you know, this this platform says I, sh I need to wear black. This one says I need to wear purple. This one says uh, cerulean blue is the color for the season. When you know who you are in Christ, you are established. Your feet are established. Like Your walk is established, okay? You understand that you have now become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus, you are the righteousness of God, okay? Understand, only if you are in Christ Jesus, which means if your identity is in what the world says it is, then you are not walking in the righteousness of God. I'm sorry to tell you, I don't care how many followers you have. I don't care how much products you're influencing on IG or social media. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care how many businesses you have. You could be a gazillionaire. You and your fame and your gazillionaire will end up in hell. If you're not walking or allowing yourself to be conformed into the image of Christ, bottom line, point blank, Period. Take it or leave it. Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> Amen. All right. So we've looked at the two, two of the most important reasons. We're going now to point number three. And I know it's just a lot of Bible verses, um, but that is who that is that is who God has really called us to be. Um, rooted in, in his word, grounded in his word. Um, if we can't, the Bible, the Bible says that we should use the word to prove all things, use it to test all things. If it's not in the word, God didn't say it. And you need to be bold. Everyone on here needs to be bold to be able to shut people down because it's not in the word. You're not being boastful. You're not being full of pride. You're just resting assured that the word of God is true. Amen. Amen. You need people to argue with God. You don't need to fight that fight. State the word of God, what the word says. Be bold. Keep it moving. Bro, I love you, but I'm out. Okay? Point number three says prayer grows us spiritually. It causes us to spiritually mature. My God. You know, as a new believer in Christ, I, I came in off the streets, literally. When I say I came in off the streets, uh... One of these days, uh, Pastor Cindy and Pastor Raj, they they gonna tell you uh, where I was, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, how messed up I was, and uh, how jacked up I was. <laughs> okay, how much of the world was in me? Amen. Thank God for grace. Okay, and I remember the last thing I came in under the tutelage of Bishop Mervyn Jordan, that's Pastor Roger Jordan's dad and pastor. Cindy's um, father-in-law before he passed. And so one of the last things he called me and he told me, he said, this, granted Bishop Jordan been calling me an evangelist from before I, I could even spell the word evangelist. So let me just put that out there, okay? He said, evangelist, you know what I desire for you? I said, what is it Bishop Jordan? He said, you know, the day is gonna come, the time is gonna come when you're gonna, your prayers are gonna have to change because the people who pray for you night and day will no longer be there to pray for you. Man, it took me a minute, but I had to receive it. I said, sir, wow, okay, sir, that sounds a bit harsh, but uh, okay, Bishop Jordan, I will learn. Uh, I didn't understand what he was saying. 
And shortly after that, Bishop Jordan passed. Like when I say shortly, I mean a few days after that he passed. And I found myself struggling. Like, oh, oh. What, did God do? what did the Holy Spirit of God do? It called me into a higher place of prayer. It called me to spend more time. And the more I spent time in the word, the more I spent time praying with God, the more I spent time talking with God, was the more I realized without even realizing it, that I was growing spiritually, that my, my, my feet were being uh, established spiritually because prayer, and I started to grow spiritually. The word of God and prayer, Pastor Cindy, work together. They go dovetail into each other. This is it. This is the word, this is prayer. And they go like this. And they work together to bring us closer to God, which results in our spiritual growth to do the things of God. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. I.e. revelation is linked to prayer. No prayer, no revelation. That's why you see a lot of people walking around with recycled prophecies. And, oh, you know, oh, it just hit my spirit. Nothing hits your spirit more than the demonic forces that you're being oppressed by. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. You ain't reading the word. You're not talking with God. You're not sitting and meditating on God's word. You're not making a conscious effort to have the word of God hidden in your heart that you may not sin against God. You're not speaking out of the abundance of your heart for God. How can you have a prophecy for me? Wow. Well you tell lies you tell okay colossians 1 9 through 11 says for this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and this is a very important point in in, in um scripture this was a letter that was written by apostle paul and he sent it to the people the church in colossus he understood that they were searching for god and they were there were new believers in the faith and so even incarcerated this was his prayer for them. He said, and we ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, that's God's will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened mm -hmm. with all might, according to his glorious power. That was Apostle Paul's prayer for the new church in Colossus. The growing believer in Christ will soon realize that because we were created by God for God. We were created by God for God. We were created for God's glory. It is impossible for us to grow and excel spiritually outside of God. So that shuts down that very thing where some believers say, oh, I don't need the church. Oh, I just need to sit by myself. And you under no guidance, you under no ministry, you under no leader. You are not being led by a shepherd after God's own heart. How are you going to come into the knowledge of, of God on your own? We were not created to be on our own. Okay? So we cannot grow and excel spiritually outside of God. Wow. If you see somebody saying that, they're lying. And you, the, their fruits will tell you. Don't worry. Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live and move and we have our being. It's not just a song written by uh, Jason Nelson, Jonathan Nelson's brother. It's, that's, it's not just a song, guys. It's, just, it's an actual Bible verse, okay? It's Acts 17, verse 28. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. This should simply translate to the believer that outside of God, we are nothing. Hmm. The growing baby depends on the milk of its mother. So too do we depend on every word that flows from the mouth of God. Jesus said in the wilderness that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Why? Because the word of God is alive. It is not some dead work. And this is the difference that as believers in Christ Jesus, we can rest assured in because the word of the God we serve is alive. 
How do we know that it's alive? Because it will go forth and accomplish what God has sent it to accomplish. It will not return unto him void. So when God says, let there be light, the universe had no, no other choice but to produce light. No other choice. It had to say, what, we go find light today, light. God, you said, let there be light. There's light. There's light. So we need to understand that as believers, we have to rely on the word of God. We got to eat it. We got to eat that stuff. Get that good food in our spirit. Get that good food in. Now, as we grow deeper and as we get stronger in Christ, we begin to fully see Colossians 1. 9 through 11 come alive in our lives we begin to see that we will become filled with all wisdom and spiritual understanding walking worthy of the lord fully pleasing him and increasing in knowledge and strength and it will be effortless it will be something that we just realize man oh wow how did i get here mm. oh why because you're spending time in the presence of god it's a deeper revelations arise out of deeper relationship with God. Our pastors always tell us. Wow. They always, always, always tell us. At the end of the day, no prayer equals no power. If there is ever another time for more prayer, my God, it is now. We need prayer. We need prayer. And I'm going to keep on saying it until it resonates in your spirit. We need prayer. We don't need no more prophecies. My God, prophecies are great. God bless them. But we need prayer. Why? Because we're living in a time where the enemy is intentional about his distractions. Okay? He is deliberate. Everything is now a distraction if we allow it to be. Amen? Mm. So we got to get our focus back. We got to get our focus back and think on the things of God. Nothing else matters. My God. Nothing else matters. Mm. People are, are going to go to hell mm. with your gazillions of dollars, Jesus. with their fame, with their notoriety, with all their flashy and fancy clothes, with all their degrees. You could have a hundred PhDs. It doesn't matter. If you are not walking in the will of God, the word of God says, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Wow. What? Mm. Why? Because sin has a price. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God told the Israelites in Deuteronomy, listen, I have set before you two paths, one to life, one to death, choose life. Life. I implore you, I beseech you today for those who are watching. If this is your first time, we welcome you. God bless you. Uh, you know, we don't preach nothing, but we don't speak nothing but the word of God. If, if you know, if you watch the replay, God bless you. Take the Bible verses down, prove everything that was said here by the Bible, because that's what the word of God says. Use the word to test and prove all things, not some things. So we covered three reasons, three of the, I want to say more important reasons, Pastor Cindy. There are a lot of other reasons, but for the time, for the sake of time, we had to condense them. And so we are at this point where we, we took out the most relevant three, okay, to the new believer and the seasoned believer, because make no bones about it. I don't care how seasoned you are. I don't care how much your mama grew up in the church, your grandmother planted the church, your grandfather laid the blocks for the church building. Uh, you can't go before God with that. Bottom line, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted and made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your heart and your life, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to go in hell with Pookie and him. Okay? Because you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Now we got some, we got some, a little, I call them wisdom nuggets because they're bite-sized chunks of just a wealth of information that when I, when I sat with, just sat with this topic, Pastor Cindy, and I really sought the Lord, I said, God, let this, let this information be wealthy, not because I speak it, not because I, I'm able to, you know, 
you know, speak whatever eloquent. Not because of elo not because of none of that foolishness, God. I said, God, let it be rich and full of wealth because you are in it. Amen. That is truly the desire of my heart with presenting this topic. Let it be rich. Let it be full of wealth, God, because it is your word. Okay. And so these little nuggets, I really want you to take the time and write them down um, because it, they will serve as little reminders um, for the new believer and the seasoned believer. You see, every day, wisdom nugget number one, every day, the believer is changing in one of two ways. We're either becoming more like Christ or we're becoming less like Christ. It's a, it's, 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 there's no gray spot. It's black or white, more like Christ, less like Christ. To grow spiritually, we are called into a holy union with the Holy God, with the help of his Holy Spirit. The more we pray is the more we become like Christ. And that is God's will for us, for us to become more like Christ. Okay. Yes. Wisdom nugget number two. Prayer should never be seen as a burden, but as a privilege that mm. Christ died for us to have. Amen. You see, the veil of separation was torn when Christ died on the cross and it gave everyone access, every Jew, Jews and Gentiles, everyone access that we as believers can boldly approach the throne of grace, knowing full well that our heavenly father hears us and knowing full well that he will respond to us. Wisdom nugget number three, the more we pray, and this one is really going to get the new believer. The more we pray, Pastor Cindy, is the more we realize that it is less about us and more about God. Amen. Less mm -hmm. about us and more about God. Why? Because the more about God is when we are fully able to discern and understand the will of God and walk in it. There is no greater purpose to our lives than being able to discern the will of God and walking in the will of God. That is when we now become not just hearers of the word, as the Bible says, but doers of the word. Okay? The most dangerous place for any believer to be is outside of the will of God. I can't mm. stress this enough. You're going to see people end up in hell with all their gazillions because they were walking outside of the will of God. Bottom line. And you going to look and say, oh, she was famous. She sure was. And she about to be famous in hell. <laughs> okay? My God. There's no better way for us to tell you. There's, there's, it, there's no my cute, God. nice, oh my gosh, polished way for us to tell you. The most dangerous place for any believer to be is outside the will of God. It's a prayer has the ability to redirect us if we have fallen off that path. Final wisdom nugget before I close, I've got like about a minute and a half left, is I am yet to see the believer, Pastor Cindy, who can outgive God. Mm. Here's an wow. interesting take. This is an interesting revelation the Holy Spirit gave me. The Bible says that if we sow sparingly, we also reap sparingly. It wasn't just talking about money or finances. It is referring to a currency in the spiritual realm. Wow. Time. Time is one of the most important currencies in the spiritual realm. It is something that we barter with. What is the most important thing the devil tries to take away from us? Or time. Mm. If it wasn't important, the devil wouldn't be trying to distract us, to waste our time and get us away from the presence of God. Time is a currency. You see, when we invest our time in God's presence, we reap a bountiful harvest of unlimited revelations from God himself. My God. Bottom line. Wow. So if you sow sparingly into the presence of God, don't expect God to be telling you no secrets and he owes you no obligation to do it. None. Absolutely none. Absolutely none. That said, I want everyone, every person on here watching live. Uh, I, I saw just a ton of hearts and stuff going up. I've been looking at my phone to the side of my eye. But I want everyone to take God to task on this and challenge yourself. Here's a challenge. Take time from your daily routine 
and intentionally, operative word, intentionally spend a minimum of 15 minutes in God's presence in prayer. It can look like simply sitting and reading the Bible or even listening some worship songs. And before you know it, you're speaking with God and feeling delighted and refreshed in his presence. Okay? You got to be intentional about it. You got 24 hours of the day. Every one of us got 24 hours in the day. 15 minutes. It Amen. can start with 15 minutes. Before you know it, you're spending two hours. Before you know it, I hear Pastor Rogers and Pastor Cindy that experience all the time. And they 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 go out. Pastor mm -hmm. Rogers said, man, listen, I, I don't even know. Four, five hours, six hours. I'm like, oh, God, I can't. Oh, God, I'm at an hour and something. God, oh. It starts. It starts with a simple step. So I want, we want to challenge everyone on here. Okay. 15 minutes in the presence of God in prayer. Okay. For the new believer watching us, if you would like to receive any additional information that we may have not covered in today's topic on prayer, and you're just really earnestly seeking guidance, you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. This is why we are here and we want to help you. You can send us an email info at goingplaceswithjesus.org. And you can request information. Our pastors are sitting and literally waiting and full of delight when you ask these questions. Send in a request. Say, hey, I need to know more about this. And we will be more than happy to share it with you. It's been mm. a sincere honor to present this message to you. I pray that you are edified and that you will accept the challenge and send in the testimonies. Pastor Cindy. It is back over to you. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh my God, I was just feeding from the revelation that was coming forth through Evangelist Sedoni on this so important and vital topic to our longevity in this race, right? Called Christendom, called just journeying with God. And I am so blessed by what God said through his daughter tonight. And I want to see how many of you were blessed. If you were blessed by what Evangel Evangelist taught us tonight, because she she did a bit, she teach and she put a little preach in there, but she taught us tonight. And I want you to put in the comments, I received, I received. Just go ahead and put in the comments, I received. And evangelist, I just want to put something out there as we get ready to wrap up, guys, that you was so, I just want to say thank God for you, for allowing yourself to be available to be used by God, because we needed this word tonight. And something that you said, and when you told us, you know, 15 minutes to start, and I want to encourage people to take up that challenge, because it's not to bring us down or to show us how inadequate we are, or to put a time stop uh, and say, okay, time, let the stop clock go. No, you can break up that 15 minutes. It could be a five minute increment here and there and where, you know, you can fit it in because we know that our schedules are not all the same. So, but be committed to this because I believe when you commit to this, it may seem small, it begins to build a momentum. It begins to build your prayer muscle in the spirit. So please, we are asking you to take this prayer journey with us for the next few weeks as we continue to sojourn together and to grow together in this vital communication. As Evangelist said, it's divine communication between ourselves and our heavenly father. And so we want to bless God for every person that was on with us tonight. We are asking that you continue to be a blessing to the kingdom. Would you consider sowing a seed into this ministry? And I want you to be very intentional in the seed that you sow, because it's not about how much you sow, but it's from the heart in which you sow it, because a cheerful giver will receive a cheerful reward. And so I'm asking you to go to our website if you so decide. We're not going to make it mandatory for anybody. We are just putting out the opportunity because when you partner with us through sowing, we are continually able to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the world. And so you can go to our website. Somebody, if you're in the comments, put it in the comments, www.goingplaceswithjesusministries.com. And once you get on our website, there is a green button that says donate. You can 
can click in a safe and secure manner and sow a seed into the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we want to say, God bless you. Continue with us next week. We'll be talking about prayer again. And on the 28th, we have our guest speaker from Trinidad, Reverend Cynthia Cadogan, who is going to top it all off on why we need to pray in this last season, in these last days. And how many of you were blessed? If you were blessed, continue to encourage Evangelist Sidoni on her journey as she continues to develop in God and through the things of God for her life. And I just want to say a big, I love you. We appreciate all of you. Pastor Roger and I are praying for you. And we want to say, continue to have a blessed rest of your week. And we are praying for you. Continue to pray for us, would you, as we pray for you. God bless you all. God bless you. Bye, everybody. We love you guys. Bye. See you next time. Amen. Wow.